True or false, locking your laptop protects your data. Is it good practice? And should you lock your laptop when you're not at your desk? Well, let's see how good the security is on this Windows laptop. I'm gonna simply toggle the switch on this Hack5 Bash Bunny. And notice as quickly as that, I've been able to log into this laptop. So I've logged in. What I'll do here is lock the laptop. Laptop has been locked. I'll toggle the switch again. And there you go, I've been able to log in. Now in that example, I don't need to know what the password is of this laptop. The password was grabbed from the laptop using the Bash Bunny, even though the laptop was locked. Password was cracked locally by the Bash Bunny. And in this case, keystrokes were sent to the laptop by the Bash Bunny to allow me to order log on. Now in some cases, you may not get the password, but there's another attack that you can use. So let's log off of this laptop. And what I'll do here is unplug the Bash Bunny and then I'll put it to position one, the bottom position here, and then I'll plug it in. And what this attack is gonna do is it's going to grab passwords from the laptop and store them locally so that I can take the Bash Bunny away and then crack the passwords offline. So I'll show you two types of attacks in this video. First one is where I'm grabbing the passwords from the laptop, locally cracking them on the Bash Bunny and then auto logging on. Second type of attack is just where I grab the passwords and I can do a offline attack to crack the passwords. Now, before we continue, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you enjoy this kind of ethical hacking content. Please like this video and click on the bell to get notifications. That really does help me with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, let's continue. Zebra, what are we doing? Hacking. What type of hacking are you doing? Bash Bunny. You're going to use Bash Bunny to break into networks? Mm -hmm. Are you a good or bad zebra? Bad zebra. Why? Because you're a hacking zebra. Yes. <laughs> well done, zebra. Let's break some networks. Okay, so let's see what we managed to capture. First thing you need to do is make sure that you set this to position three. I'll plug it into this computer. And there you go, I've got the Bash Bunny. Let's have a look under loot. Here's my Dell XPS. Notice passwords. It's discovered three passwords. Those are the three passwords of my three users. So it's discovered the user Peter has this password, one, two, three, four, five, six. David has password one. Jane has password QWERTY. Now I purposely chose bad passwords because otherwise this video would just end up being really, really long. You can use quick creds if you wanna do an offline attack. So looking at proxy auth NTLM v2, I've got a hashed version of the password and I could take that offline and do a brute force attack against it. But if the user's passwords are in my dictionary, I can do a local attack and log on to the computer. So under loot again, here's my Nmap results. It found a device and then ran the attack because this port is open, TCP 445. It was as simple as that to attack a computer that was locked and get access to the information on that computer. I could log in because Bash Bunny discovered the passwords based on a dictionary attack. And again, I could use quick creds to grab the passwords, remove the drive, and then do a brute force or another offline attack. Now the Bash Bunny from Hack5 has a lot of options. I demonstrated the rubber ducky in this video, showed you a different type of attack using the rubber ducky. The Bash Bunny has a lot more options than the rubber ducky, including the fact that you can have multiple payloads here. You can also create your own payloads, but in this video, I'll show you two very powerful payloads that you can download with the Bash Bunny. Okay, so the first thing you need to know are the switch positions. Position three closest to where you plug the USB in that's how you configure the Bash Bunny. And then you can switch to position two or position one where you can load different payloads. So first thing I'll do is set this to position three, 
which is arming mode, allows me to configure this, update the firmware, load different payloads. I've plugged that into this Windows laptop. I'm gonna use Windows for this demonstration because a lot of people use Windows. You can also use Linux or Mac OS to configure this device. Okay, so it's picked up the rubber ducky as disk D. This runs Linux, uh, has lots of powerful options, but I'm just gonna show you some simple options to get started, show you how to run those two very powerful scripts. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is update the firmware. You can download that from the Hack5 website. I'll put all these links below this video so that you can access them easily. But what I'm gonna do is download the rubber ducky updater in my example for Windows 64-bit. As you can see, there are options for Linux and Mac OS. So I'll download this to my downloads directory. I've already downloaded it previously, but for this demonstration, I'll replace that. I'll show it in folder. Okay, so here it is. I'll extract that. And what I get is an executable file. Now on my Bash Bunny, I already have that file. All you do basically is copy that and put it into the root of the Bash Bunny. So I'll replace that file. So again, on my D drive, the Bash Bunny in the root, I've pasted that file. I'll double click on that. Only option available here is to update the Bash Bunny. So I'm gonna type zero, press enter, and the software checks whether it's up to date. As you can see, my software is already up to date. What this also does, which is very nice, is copy payloads to the Bash Bunny. Now I've had problems with that, so I'll show you how you can update that manually. Press enter to exit that script, and all you need to do now is eject the Bash Bunny, make sure that you eject it safely, and then unplug it, plug it back in and it'll auto update the software. The LEDs are really important. They tell you what the Bash Bunny is doing. But as you can see here, mine booted up and I see the Bash Bunny directory again. On the Bash Bunny wiki available on the Hack5 website, I'll link to that once again. You can see position indicators, you can see the directory structure. As an example, we wanna look at loot to see the hacked information we can see default information of the Bash Bunny, but notice here, green blinking means it's booting up, blue means it's arming, red blinking means that we're in recovery mode or the firmware is flashing, and blue-red alternating means don't unplug it. So there's a lot of other information available on the Hack5 website. Again, I'm not gonna show you that in a lot of detail. What I wanna show you is that under payloads, you can specify a payload for switch one and switch two. Under library, they have a whole bunch of payloads. Now, if this for some reason doesn't get updated by the payload updater, you can download all the payloads from GitHub. So under payloads, notice switch one, switch two, but library has a whole bunch of payloads that you can use. And the two that I demonstrated are payloads from here. So under credentials, we have a whole bunch of payloads. I'm gonna select this one. And looking at the readme file, you can see that this uses ethernet to attempt a dictionary attack against passwords. And that's exactly the payload that I ran. Okay, so the payload is here. All we need to do is copy this to the right switch and it will attack per this payload. So this makes it really, really easy for us. We don't have to write this. Someone's already done all the hard work. Under user list, the default user available is administrator. I've added additional users here so that we can crack those users. Under word list, here are a bunch of passwords that could be used to try and attack the device. The word list isn't very long. We told in the readme file that there are great word lists available on GitHub. This is a famous word list. So you can download a whole bunch of word lists here if you want to. You can update this word list that comes with this attack with your own passwords. Now this attack does rely on additional software that you need to install on the Bash Bunny. So going back to the Hack5 website, you're gonna to wanna to download Metasploit. 
you need the Metasploit framework for this attack to work. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is download Metasploit. That's gonna be saved to tools on the Bash Bunny. So I'll save that file. And then I'll download Go HTTP, save it to the same directory, save Responder, and save Impact. Now, as you can see here, it says virus detected. So what I'm gonna do, and this is a problem using Windows as an example rather than Linux, is I'm gonna go to virus and threat protection and I'm gonna turn this off. And I'm gonna try and download Responder again. Okay, so the files have been downloaded. They are stored in tools on the Bash Bunny. So what I'm gonna do now is eject the Bash Bunny. All I need to do is unplug it and then plug it back in again. That'll take a while because it's gonna move those files to Linux but for a lot of these attacks, you need that software. So as an example, for the attack that I demonstrated at the beginning of this video, you need the Metasploit framework, but for the others, you need some of the other software, so I've simply downloaded all those tools. Okay, so at the moment, it's still installing the software. The LED is actually purple at the moment. You just need to wait for that process to complete. Okay, so there you go. That process is now completed. As you can see under tools, the tools have been moved from this directory into Linux. So they'll now be available to be used by attacks. Okay, so under payloads, I put two attacks in the payloads directory. Under switch two, and that's the one that I demonstrated, I have a user list of various users. So Peter, David, and Jane as an example are the user accounts that I'm gonna attack. And I know that because when I looked at the computer, I could see the various accounts on that computer. Word list is a list of passwords. Again, you can use Seclists or RockU or another word list to try and break the passwords on a device. As mentioned, if that doesn't work, the attack that I've put into switch one basically snags all the passwords so snags credentials from locked and unlocked machines. So quick creds is a way to just grab passwords and then you can do an offline brute force attack or dictionary attack. But going back to switch two, here's the payload. This is the actual script that someone else has written. We can simply use this from the library of scripts available from Hack5. These are the passwords that it discovered, and rather than trying to rerun the attack, it can simply use this file to try and log onto the machine again. The readme file tells us that this attack is for Windows. At the moment, it uses Ethernet to attempt dictionary attacks against passwords. When the password is discovered, it's stored in a file for future use as demonstrated. The password may be used to unlock the machine by manually selecting a user and placing focus on the password field and then it auto logs on. Uh, we do that by switching the position of the switches, which I demonstrated. Okay, so let's delete these files and start the attack from the beginning to the end. I've updated my Bash Bunny. I've uploaded the tools to the Debian installation. So under payloads, library, I'm gonna try and snag credentials. I'm gonna go to this directory and I'm simply gonna copy all of these files to switch two. That's the attack that we wanna run when the switch is in position two on the Bash Bunny. So just to double check, there are our users. By default, it's only administrator, but I've added these additional users. Word list, there's the passwords, there's the payload that's gonna run, and there's the readme file once again. On switch one, I'll delete these two files. Go to library, go to credentials, go to quick creds, and I'll copy those two files to switch one. Now what I'm gonna do is delete all of the files under loot. 
to show you the attack from the beginning. So I've deleted all the files and let's run the full attack once again. So just to reiterate, under payloads, switch one, I've got an attack. Switch two, I've got my attack. It hasn't discovered the passwords for the Dell XPS laptop yet, but let's run the attack again and I'll show you how it discovers those passwords. First thing I need to do is eject the Bash Bunny. Make sure that you eject it properly from your computer. Okay, so attack is ready to be launched. Okay, so here's my Dell laptop. I'll start it up. I'll plug this in and I'll set the Bash Bunny to switch two. This will try and snag all the credentials. So I'll plug that in. You can see it's green at the moment. Now it goes to purple. That means that it's starting to attack. You can see it's flashing now. Just have to wait a while for this to complete. Okay, so after a while it goes green. That means that it's successfully attacked this computer. So again, all I need to do is toggle this to say position one and then back to position two and I can log into the computer. Do that again. So I'll lock the computer. Okay, incorrect password. I need to put it in this position. So I'll toggle this. And there you go, log back in. Okay, so the Bash Bunny is really powerful. These are just two examples of attacks using the Bash Bunny. It's got its own scripting language. You can write your own attacks, but here are two really powerful attacks that you can deploy using the Bash Bunny. I'm David Bombal. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell to get notifications. Hi.